1201. So it is time for a Wednesday webinar. I just want to welcome everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to the Wednesday webinar series. This month, YPN will be taking over all five of this month's webinars to deliver content geared toward new or young realtors. Today, more than 20,000 realtors call themselves YPNers nationally. In addition to this national network, nearly 400 state and local realtor associations now have their own young professionals network, and we are one of those very proudly so. Uh, if you're new to the industry or are looking to engage or energize younger or newer members, please join us at ypn.lirealtor.com. Um, our special guest today is Heather Haas. Heather is bringing us a webinar on creating short form video content. She'll help us understand how to make and utilize TikTok, Reels, and YouTube Shorts. And here's a little bit about Heather. Heather Haas has been a realtor for over seven years and a trainer for over three. She is also a celebrated national speaker. In her real estate career, she specializes in helping first-time home buyers, members of the military, and agent-to-agent -agent referrals. Heather is passionate about education and conventions, which emphasizes her love for learning. Heather has also traveled the country speaking at top real estate events on topics such as mindset, mindfulness, social media, networking, and events. She's also, she also volunteers for Dayton Realtors and on the Ohio Realtors Board of Directors. Additionally, she has chaired the award-winning Dayton and Ohio YPNs. Heather is also an NAR Commitment to Excellence Ambassador. In her spare time, Heather enjoys spending time with her daughter, going to karaoke and traveling and enjoying all Dayton has to offer. And with that, we welcome you, Heather, and I'm turning it over to you. Amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, everybody. I see we have a few highs in the chat and the Q&A and different things like that. So I'm super excited to be here. Um, this has been like almost a year in the making. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're about like we've been talking about this for like eight months now so um but i'm super excited um i actually think i've met a few of you last year when i spoke at triple play um but, but you know uh and which i'll be at again so um i'm gonna go ahead and get started today's class is called short but sweet a beginner's guide to using short form video from TikTok to reels to shorts and again my name is is Heather Haas, but you can call me Sunshine. Again, my name is Heather. I've been a realtor for over seven years and I reside in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, if you've ever been to Dayton, put it in the comments, say hey. If you've ever been to Ohio, you can say hey. Uh, we love you guys out here. So I love coming out to that area. It's really nice. I've actually never been to Long Island though. Uh, I am a national speaker, a keynote coach, teacher, all sorts of things. I'm a C2X ambassador. I have my gold standard instructor license. Uh, our certification. I am also a military relocation professional, and I have my at home with diversity certification as well. I am a mom to a tween. If you don't know what a tween is, that is a 12 year old, uh, not quite there to teen, but not quite a child anymore. Um, I love her. Her name is Charlie, uh, but you'll see why I'm adding this stuff in here later on in the uh, the class. I'm a conference junkie. I love going to conferences. I love attending them. I love meeting new people. I love being educated. I love learning more and more and more. And I'm also an avid association volunteer. I, be I truly believe like I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for my volunteering in the association. I'm a queen of karaoke night. So if you do see me at Triple Play or NAR Next or any of the other conferences coming up, I will totally go to karaoke with you, seeing if I have my voice, because last time that happened at a conference, I got laryngitis, so that wasn't fun. I'm also a faux pas, and what that means is I'm a mom who likes to tell dad jokes. Get it? I'm a faux pas. So I can't see your faces, so like I don't know what the reaction is there. Hopefully I got a little bit of a chuckle out of you guys, though. I did want to add a little bit in here because uh, I really do love YPN. YPN is where I got my start. It's how I actually started getting on the stages. It's how I started getting in front of people, meeting my group of people. Uh, later this month for your uh, YPN takeover, you are actually going to get to meet Jairo Rodriguez, who he's this guy right here next to me. He's out of New Jersey. And then Rob Reuter, we call him the Rob father. He is somewhere here in the middle here, but he is the YPN liaison 
for NAR. Um, there's so many different reasons why you should be involved with YPN or any sort of organization, whether it's Women's Council of Realtors, Realtor, Realtors, ARIA, um, NARA, the LBGTQ plus IA Alliance or IA plus Alliance. There's so many different things or even your board of directors. Uh, first off, your understanding of the business and educational opportunities referrals. Uh, I get a lot of referrals because of uh, everything that I do. You get a deeper understanding of your community and what is happening within that. There's gateways to more leadership opportunities, whether that's running for office or running for your local board of directors. And then it's a sense of community and lifelong friends. With that, we're going to jump right into the class and we're going to kick this off with some statistics from NAR. So if you guys didn't know, NAR every single year comes out with a technology survey. They actually um, didn't used to come out with it every year. And I would say probably within the past like two, well, what we got here, four years, they started coming out with it more and more and more. And they kind of keep track of what realtor, what networks people are using. Um, so we still have Facebook, but as you can see in 2019, 97% of realtors were using Facebook. And now, uh, since the latest survey, it is 89%. Then Instagram has the one that's been slowly growing and they're both part of meta. So they're both, you know, conjoined there, but as Facebook's falling a little bit, Instagram is raising a little bit. And then we have LinkedIn. LinkedIn is our oldest social media network on here. Um, LinkedIn started in 2002. It is um, kind of holding steady. It's, it's dropping, it goes up, it goes down, um, but LinkedIn is great. And LinkedIn is great for your business to business communications. It's that, it's really where you go to network with other business professionals. And then we have YouTube. Now, some would argue YouTube is not a social network. However, it has started to become more social, especially in the past three years. There's now feeds, they have shorts, they have ways to interact with each other. So it is becoming more and more of a social network and it is growing in that sense. And it really is one of the largest things out there because it is owned by Google. And then we have Twitter. Um, I would be very interested to see how these numbers look for next year's survey because Twitter is falling uh, very, very, very quickly. And then we have TikTok. Nobody was taking TikTok seriously in 2019. All of a sudden, it just keeps doubling and doubling and doubling every single year. And this actually goes along with um, all the statistics from like Hootsuite and Pew Research and everything. Um, you have a question. Yes, the meeting started. Somebody asked. Sorry, if you guys didn't know. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to make sure. I, I, are people having a technical difficulty? I think we're okay. It seems like everything is in order. So let's just keep on trucking. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, meeting started. So we just got that Q&A. By the way, if you have any questions about any of my slides, feel free to drop it into the Q&A. We're also going to be watching chat as well. But Q&A kind of keeps it a little bit cleaner to where we can see these questions. So why are realtors using social media? At 63%, it's used to promote listings. 59% say, eh, it's just expected of me. 57% say it's to help build and maintain existing relationships with clients and other real estate professionals. And then 41% are using it to uh, find new prospects and leads. But it also in this research, they have found the biggest tech tool, and this goes beyond the website, this goes beyond MLS, this go be, goes beyond landing pages. Social media is the number one tech tool for the best high quality leads. Can anybody tell me why in the chat? Maybe. I'll give it like five more seconds. Because of the tools and suites and apps, that that's one of them. There's definitely you definitely have that because you can do those landing pages and stuff in there. 
because you can connect directly to your target market. Exactly. That is one of the biggest reason everyone has it. It's great to, you know, be in front of everybody. Uh, I'll keep looking out there for that. But um, yes, everybody has it. Um, there is great way to connect with people, but also you are able to educate people as well. I don't know about you guys, but I am feeling, because I tend to work with first-time home buyers a lot, I am feeling a lot of my first-time home buyers are coming to me a lot more educated than they were five years ago because they're watching these videos on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram Reels and LinkedIn and all these places, they're seeing these the news and they're like, okay, so we understand the market and we understand how this is going. Um, so they already know they already have a game plan in place. Now, sometimes is that information bad? Yes. I actually always use the disclaimer when I am trying to talk about information uh, in my videos or on my social media. Hey, this may not apply to your state. So that's always something to go uh, to, to be mindful of, because I know just talking to my friends in New York, you guys do business a little differently than we do here. So we are a title state. I know you guys use lawyers. If I am wrong, please correct me. Um, or if that has changed, uh, please correct me. But there's I know you guys do things just a little bit different. And that's true with every state. It's true of in my state too, because um, some areas do round table closing, some don't, some fund at the table, some don't. So, uh, and that's just in my state alone. I'm correct about New York. Awesome. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's right. So <laughs> this is a, um, these are some statistics pulled from HubSpot uh, research. You can see that the format that's been offering the highest return on investment for social media is short form video. It has blown every single other type of media out there out of the water, 34%. And I think the biggest reason why is because it's very consumable. Like you can watch it like between walking to your car or in the line at the grocery store or just doom scrolling at night. So you're able to get a lot of information very fast. So that leads the question, what is short form video? As I mentioned before, we have three big players when it comes to short form video. Over here on the left-hand side, we have YouTube Shorts. Um, and then over here on the right side, we have Instagram Reels. And right here in the middle, the start of it all, it was our TikTok. Uh, TikTok's one of my favorite. Uh, it's the one I'm most active on. Uh, and that's just because I started there and I have become used to the tools and everything. I'm not saying one is better than the other, unless if there's something like Instagram has, I don't like Instagram's editing tools as much as I like, as much as I like TikToks and shorts doesn't have really great editing tools at all, but I will go into that a little bit more. So here's some similarities of the pro uh, of the uh, platforms. So all three platforms allow users to create short form video. That's true. Each platform offers a wider range of music to add to videos. And I often get the question, well, can I use that music? Right now, they're trying to figure that out. Now, you can't use the music if you are trying to sell something. That, that is absolutely true. But I definitely always recommend if you think you're going to be using a lot of the popular music out there, talk to your lawyer, you can talk to your uh, company's lawyer, anything like that uh, to get a little bit, but there's always the argument of public use and the fact that it's on the app anyways. So um, I'm currently using it, but things may change in a few years. You never know what may happen. All three platforms heavily rely on user-generated content. So uh, they rely on us to bring people to the app to keep people in, which feeds into the algorithm. Each platform uses hashtags to categorize and organize content, which is actually starting to change just a little bit. They're starting to get away from hashtags. 
All three platforms offer basic filters and effects to enhance videos and make them more visually appealing. And then each platform's algorithm goal is to show users relevant and engaging content based on their interests and behaviors. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok has this one blown out of the water. Like I believe their algorithm works the best to where it is targeting the right audience for things. But it is really kind of funny that uh, I can get on my Instagram reels and I have a completely different uh, experience than if I do on my TikTok with the type of content that I'm getting. So here, oh, we got a question. So true. Um, so here are the differences of the platforms. First off, even though TikTok does a really, really great job of putting you in front of the right audiences and everything, Instagram Reel still has one of the highest watch rates, which I was very surprised about. It has a 13.9% average watch rate, which is amazing. Um, you're typically seeing it down here with the shorts at about 3% with uh, engagement on posts. And then the engagement, but the engagement rate is better on TikTok. People are more likely to engage on TikTok compared to Reels. Um, TikTok records an average engagement engagement rate that's six times bigger than Reels. So it's kind of, you know, it's twofold. So that's why I say they're pretty equal because even though people are probably watching your content more and longer on Instagram, and I think the reason is because not as many people are making content on there, people are more likely to engage with you and try to connect with you on TikTok. TikTok is its own thing, while Reels is a part of the metaverse and Shorts is a part of YouTube. Reels allows up to 90 second videos, Shorts allows only 60 second videos, and TikTok, I'm gonna have to change this again because they're constantly changing this and it depends on what version of the app you have, but TikTok actually now allows up to 10 minute videos. Uh, it'll go back and forth. Even on my, uh, I have an updated version of the app. I have an iPhone, everything. And sometimes it changes back to three minutes just for me. Um, so there are definitely features that you may see on my TikTok that may not be available on yours, just depending on how many followers you have, how many, um, how long you've been on the app, how long you interact and different things like that. Uh, TikTok is way ahead on editing tools. Instagram though is getting better. I went in there recently today because I have another class later today on Instagram, um, but TikTok is still way ahead on editing tools. There's also another app, I believe it is owned by the people who own TikTok called CapCut that you can use to edit videos both in TikTok and Instagram and not have to worry about like having to edit in TikTok, download, different things like that. Um, now, when you do use the editing tools within an app, the app's going to favor your video a little bit more. And the reason being is because they want to try to keep people on the app for as long as they possibly can. TikTok has made their algorithm extremely specific, making it easier for businesses to find an audience. So you can, you know, make a product, obviously, like real estate is our product, but you can get so extremely niche on TikTok that you're able to reach that target audience. And I know a lot of people, that's what they do. They work just with military or they target mainly like first time home buyers and different things like that. So here's a little bit of what you can see of the differences between their screens when you're making a video. You can see like they're all pretty much the same. You can flip the camera around. They all have timers, which is my favorite. Now in shorts and reels, they actually have the green screen right as you're starting to make the video. But on TikTok, it's actually in your effects. Um, but they're really cool to interact with and everything like that. And if you ever get this, uh, I always recommend to people, you want to sit down and start playing with the apps just a little bit to figure out how the tools are made. And then when you go to make a TikTok, 
you can see that you can edit within the within the TikTok. So you can actually upload your own content, or you can edit with, uh, or you can film within the TikTok, and you just need a little ring light or um, somewhere to put your camera up and everything like that. And you're able to edit, uh, split, add sounds, all sorts of things that you can do within TikTok. You can add text, stickers, you can add effects, um, you can do voiceovers. A lot of my videos where I'm going around and I'm showcasing different areas throughout town, I like to do voiceovers. So I take the con I take the content throughout day throughout the day. I put it on 0.5 on my video and I just do like a quick video and then all my content I made throughout that day, I upload it to TikTok and I just edit it within the app and then I do a voiceover. And then we also have captions that I want to point out. I recommend trying to put captions on all your videos uh, because you got to think about how you consume videos sometimes. And uh, like I'm in a grocery store line, I don't want my TikTok blaring all the time, so I'm reading it. But also we want to think about ADA compliance as well. Now with shorts, it is fairly simple. Like I said, the shorts, they don't really have a lot of editing features in there. You can add sound, you can add a timeline and you can do a voiceover, but that's about it. You may have to edit outside of shorts or just upload your TikTok or Instagram to there. And then we have Reels. Reels acts a lot like a mixture between TikToks and Instagram stories uh, to where you can add features in that make them very um, interactive, different things like that. The one thing I do really love about Reels that I don't love about TikTok is that you can actually add covers to your videos as well, which means you can go into Canva and you can create a very pretty uh, picture. So when they go to your uh, page, they're just seeing that picture and it looks very clean. Uh, you cannot do that with TikTok and I believe you can with shorts though. So what do you do tips for growth? Let's play a little bit of a game. Let's talk about identifying your audience. So I'm gonna give you guys a few moments to think about this. If I were to ask you who your perfect client was, like, and you can get very specific, who your perfect client was, what would you say? And go ahead and put that into the chat. So for example, as, I, as you guys are putting this into the chat, I'll give you a couple of examples. I have a friend, he says his perfect client is um, a woman who's expecting because they are somebody who needs a place, needs to get the job done, and they're going to think rationally about what they need. So he's like, that's my perfect client. Um, for myself, it is somebody who is willing to listen to me, who has all their stuff together and knows what they want. So I see we have a couple of com comments. We got millennials, first time home buyers, relocation, which is funny because we're going to actually be talking about niches here in a bit too. But really, really think about your audience. Is it your friend group? Is it um, waterfront properties? Is it luxury? Oh, we got empty nesters. Okay. I'll keep reading comments as they come along, but um, divorcees, okay. First time home buyers that are well qualified. So we're getting specific. Graduating class from college, I'm guessing. Which by the way, guys, if you didn't know, um, when you graduate from college, you can actually get a letter from your employer and you can use your college experience as um, for your pre-approval and stuff. We have estate sales. Amazing. I'll keep reading these as they come in. Because any property seller, <laughs> Please, please tell us more about that letter if you have time. Okay, so I can take a moment and definitely ask your lender because again, I am a realtor, I am not a lender. So, um, but if you are graduating from college, you can um, get a letter from your employer saying, this is what 
they what we're offering. So it's an offer letter lender. Um, Peter saying that is correct. So Peter, since you are a lender, if I say anything wrong, please correct me. Okay. <laughs> so you can get a letter and then they can use your experience in college as you know how you have to be to you have to be in your um job for like two years typically they can use that experience in college as a part of that so therese says any client buyer and seller it looks like somebody's raising their hand it doesn't say who it just says zoom user we'll look into that for you heather okay cool <laughs> thank you okay so go niche uh, our niche, whatever you want to call it, uh, I use it interchangeably. So here's some examples of going niche. We have military. We have first time home buyers. We have what I like to call right sizing. I hate calling it downsizing because sometimes they don't necessarily want to downsize and that feels very confining to them. They want to right size. They want to find what is right for them. Um, luxury is another really great mar market. We also have agriculture. We have waterfront, commercial, referrals, and so much more. Like there's so many different things. And if you have a niche, please put it in the comments. Um, you know, we're sitting here trying to identify your audience. But the reason why I'm trying to tell you guys, like think about your audience and think about your niche, because that will help you make very specific content. For example, what if you were working with military, what is a form you may need to prove that to get their VA loan? So, you know, those are the little things that you can do. Or if you're working with first time home buyers, mostly first time home buyers, they don't know much except what they're viewing on YouTube and TikTok and Reels. So, with first time home buyers, they need that step by step process. Okay, I need a pre approval. Why do I need a pre approval? And you can go into that. And then that makes making content so easy because then you can start to number it out because you got to remember this is short form video. We're trying to keep it, I'm just going to say a minute or less. Obviously, it depends on what platform you're on, on but you can make a really quick uh, video about what's a pre approval, what's a pre approval versus getting pre-qualified, there's a video right there. And then you can say, what all goes into a pre-approval? There's a video right there. And what's awesome is that hopefully, because we, you know, we have a little, we have a lender in here, hopefully you can team up with some of your lender partners and they can also answer for you. Because at the end of the day, guys, we have to be careful how we're like talking about loans and stuff. Please don't ever quote interest rates. You can say generally like this is, but you can also talk about what factors go into play with an interest rate or what you need to be looking for when you're viewing your first home. So, and then going down to luxury, our luxury buyers are different from uh, first time home buyers, very much so. They're looking for somebody, something completely different. Agriculture, that's another thing, that's a lifestyle. Waterfront, again, that's a lifestyle. There's so many different things that you need to know there. You need to know about water rights, you need to know about flood zones, insurance, different things like that. Commercial, completely different ball game than residential. And then I put down referrals. Uh, I meant to put down agent to agent referrals. I specialize in agent to agent referrals. So a lot of my content is actually for you guys. It's for educating realtors or just making realtors laugh because I like to be funny. So um, that's what a lot of my content goes for. And as you're starting to think about this, I encourage you to make a list either on your phone or next to your computer. Like, okay, what is my audience? What do they want to know? What are they looking for? Now, I, I talked about how I really love first-time home buyers. I am also a single mom to a teenage daughter. That could be my target as well because I want to make content for them. So how, so what are their problems? Well, they need to find probably an affordable solution to living in the home. Is it better for them to rent or is it better for them to own? Is it, how are they going to afford? Do they need down payment assistance? What goes into a down payment assistance program? Just right there, I said about like five different pieces of content. 
Um, so just think about these things. Okay. I was just seeing who was commenting. The next thing is you want to be consistent. That is really the secret sauce about this business at all. Whether you are trying to become big on social media, whether you are trying to, um, farm for sale by owners, whether you're trying to farm at neighborhood, whether you're trying to go door knocking, cold call, anything like that, you have to be consistent. Just a little bit a day goes a long way. Um, and I didn't mean to rhyme, but you know, it's fun to rhyme. <laughs> But here's an example of how you can keep yourself on task if you do decide you really want to be prevalent on social media and create short form video. I encourage you to, uh, to print off a calendar for the month and start writing down the days like, OK, what am I going to talk about this day? What am I going to talk about that day? What? fuels my soul to talk about, which I'll talk about here in a second. Maybe on Mondays or every other Monday or first Monday of the month, you're going to do a market update and you can get hyper specific as well. I don't know Long Island super well, so I don't know the names of the cities within Long Island, um, but I do know, let's see, I'm trying to think of, I do know some of the bureaus in New York, so I can make something a Brooklyn update, and then I can do a Queens update, or I can do a Manhattan update. So you can really break it down by town as well and keep it under a minute. I have something on here that says Taco Tuesday. Maybe every other Tuesday you go to a local taco joint and you just review this business on uh, on tacos. Or maybe it's like, let's talk about it Tuesday and you get people to give you questions about certain things and you go live every Tuesday. And on Wednesdays, you do seller tips and buyer tips. And then maybe Friday, you're going to talk about what's happening in your town this weekend. And then maybe on the weekends, you'll do a couple of uh, business spotlights. Another thing that really goes into growing on social media is engaging. So um, again, social media apps really want you to stay on that social media app as long as possible, but they also want you to keep people there as well. So is your content engaging? Are you liking people's posts as well? Are you commenting on people's posts as well? Are you following? Are you sharing? Are you messaging people? These are different ways to stay engaged and make connections. And then you can also collaborate. Like I said, I do a lot. Um, I don't want to say I do a lot, but I did do a lot with a lender. I used to be and you know, we used to have a partnership until he left the business where we would make videos every month on certain subjects and everything like that. And I would let him talk more about the lending side and I would talk a little bit more about what happens in the real estate side. But we had a really great partnership, too, to where we threw client events together. We did first time home buying seminars together. We did seller seminars together. And he was always that resource. And we were very much alike. So we were able to have fun while doing that. Uh, another thing that we offered to clients that closed with the both of us was we offered to throw them client appreciate like a, like a little house party. And basically all that was, was we took care of inviting their friends. And then we took care of some of the catering, the food, and it was fun. And it got us referrals as well. You also want to try to provide value. So again, thinking back to your audience, what do they need to know? Um, and what, what are things as you became a realtor that you learned along the way as well? You can also use a hook. I actually, I super recommend it. So what I mean by using a hook is, I'm trying to think here. So it's it's almost like clickbait. You start off the video like top five reasons to not buy real estate right now. And then you cut off there for a second and then you go into your explanation for about five to 10 seconds. And then you go into your top five reasons and you could make it a series. So top five reasons to not buy real estate now. I'm doing a series for this week. Please be uh, please be on the lookout. 
Um, and I will do one every single day. And then you can do a countdown. So the fifth reason is this, the fourth reason is this, the third reason is this, two, one, then you're done. And you can do that. Or you can talk about your town as well. Top five places to go and uh, go find a dog patio in your neighborhood. And top five places, according to your opinion, to go hiking. Because the most important thing is really to just be yourself. Um, when we're ourselves, we're going to be our most authentic. We're going to enjoy what we're talking about on camera. Uh, if anybody was on here before we started the class, um, Liana and I were talking, and I know I mispronounced your name now, but <laughs> we were talking about ADHD. So I talk a lot about ADHD on my Facebook page and on my TikTok. I talk a lot about my life and my kid and different things like that. Um, I tell a lot of dad jokes. I tell, um, I try to be funny. I talk about my volunteering. I'm just trying to be myself as much as I authentically can. And that's how people really make a connection with you. So I have another thing for you guys to type in. I want you guys to start naming something that you are passionate about that actually has nothing to do with real estate and it has nothing to do with your family. So example is I really love to travel. I also really love Mexican food. And I, uh, my mom really loves Harry Potter. I really love animals. So we got cooking, we got bird rescue, Thai food, Star Trek, fashion. Um, Liana, a little like thing I know about New York is up near Fort Ticon Ticonderoga, there is a Star Trek museum. I will be going. Um, I used to date a guy in New Jersey. Please don't hold that against me. Um, <laughs> but I used to date a guy in New Jersey and he was a reenactor. So I'm a big history nerd as well. And so I went up to Fort Ticonderoga and there is this little Star Trek museum. So random and like an hour north of Lake George. <laughs> like so random. Um, we have fashion, we have entertaining, reading, gardening, traveling, classical movies. So really start thinking about that and also where you live. So for example, we have fashion. What are the best places to go shopping in your area? Is there multiple? You can make you can do a business spotlight where you interview those business owners. You can make a list, top five places to go get your dress for this event this weekend. Um, we also have gardening. You can do gardening tips in there. One of my really good friends, and I think I share her name at the end uh, here, she actually has grown on TikTok so much that she gets partnerships with them. And she doesn't talk about real estate at all. She talks about house cleaning. She loves to clean and organize. I don't get it, but she loves it. And she does house hack videos, um, classical movies. I don't know about where you are, Jennifer, but here we have great theaters to go see classical movies. And then um, you could always do like, is there a classical movie at the park? And then you can also think about integrating this into your business as well. You can do a client event, like a screening of Casa Banca on the at your local park or anything like that. You can really get into it and get known for these things. We have cooking. Are there definitely places that you can go and like cook, um, you know, different meals, food prep, all sorts of things there. Um I'm trying to think about something that I just thought about, about it with cooking. I know a realtor, her name is Lee Thomas Brown. Uh, you can go look her up, she's awesome, but she does a weekly cooking show on her page when it comes to real estate. So there's so many different things that you can do. By the way, uh, I really do love Thai food as well. It's one of my top three. <laughs> You also want to make sure that you're using the right tools. If I were to make a video where I am holding my phone and I am shaking it constantly or moving around constantly, you would probably scroll by that so quickly because you're going to get motion sickness. 
So you want to make sure that you have something to keep your phone stable. Now they make all sorts of devices to where you can um, either get like a really small one to have on your desk. If you're going to be filming at your desk, they make um, selfie sticks that uh, have like the stabilization in them. I'm trying to think of uh, like a DGI, DJI Osmo, I believe is what it's called. They have... A lot of times what I do is I, t I have this big cup and I'll just like lean my phone against the cup. They make stuff for your phone. Exactly. They do all sorts of things to keep your phone stable, but nobody wants to see like an earthquake happening when you're filming. Uh, the next thing is lighting. You want to make sure the area is well lit um, and clear. These are very minimal, minimal items. Like right now I'm in my office. I have decent lighting. It's not the best lighting, but it's decent lighting. So I don't have to worry about having this on, which is good because I don't know where the cord is, but <laughs> I don't have to worry about having that on. However, if you're doing this stuff in the basement and you don't have the right lighting, people can't see you. Or if it's outside at dark, people can't see you. And then the next thing is the microphone. Um, you can use a lavalier mic. You can use a Bluetooth mic. I I've even seen people that have these really cute tiny mics and they're very cheeky, but um, they're super fun to watch. But you can use those certain things so people can hear you because nothing makes people scroll faster if they can't hear what you are saying. And it also helps with the auto captions as well. And again, think a little bit about quality over quantity. And I'm not saying this as far as um, your quality of work, like it needs to be picture perfect because we all start somewhere, which is part of what you need to do. Um, but you want to make sure that you're writing out what you're going to say. You want to make sure that you have some sort of plan. If you're serious about integrating social media into your business, you have to have a social media at least chapter of your business plan. You have to have a business plan too, but um, you can do a social media business plan. And guys, I've gone on chat GPT and asked them for a six month social media business plan and they've given that to me. So there's all sorts of tools you can use out there to make a, a, make a business plan. And then just know you just have to start. Um, People tend to get into their heads a lot. I hear a lot from people. They're like, oh, I don't like the way I sound. I don't like the way I look and everything. Well, psychology, we tend to connect with faces and we tend to connect with the people that we know, like, and trust. So I don't pe tell people just get over it because it's a little unnerving to just get over it. But are you sitting there in front of a person all the time saying, wow, I really don't like the way this person sounds. Wow, I don't really like the way that people look. Probably not. And if you are, I mean, more power to you, but most likely you're not. So people aren't thinking that about you either when you get on there. We're not supposed to really like the way we look and sound on camera because of the way it's flipped. So, you know, think about that. Also, if you get very nervous around a camera, First off, you can think of it like your friend, like somebody sitting there, or what I used to do and how I trained some of my agents here to um, work, with the, work with this camera is I have them put their phone in front of them, like just set it on whatever, where it's facing them, like it's filming them without filming them. And then we take baby steps as we go. Now, also... You don't have to post every single day. They're going to tell you you should. And yes, does that help you grow your account more? Absolutely. But you don't have to do it every single day. You just have to start. If that is once a week for you, that's awesome. I, I like. I would love for you to just start at once a week. Maybe every Friday you make a short form video and t touch base. Is it twice a week? Awesome. Is it twice a month? Awesome. You just got to start somewhere. So again, what do you do for content? We went around some ideas of how we can personally add our touch into content, but also with realtors and everything like that, you can reenact a story that's become very, very popular, especially like on TikTok, where they wanted you to have a lot more original content, where you're reenacting a story between you and your clients. Now, I always tell people, be careful, don't make fun of your clients or anything like that. Make sure that you keep a lot of their private stuff, private, different things like that, but you can reenact a conversation. Um, 
trying to think here, like me walking in on a seller who is still there, but naked, like that is a story. Well, don't get, you know, on camera, but you can say like, you, you know, you walked in different things like that. And you're like, oh, you can do your shock face and everything. You can showcase the neighborhood. So I don't know about you guys, but I live in Beaver Creek, Ohio, which is right outside of Dayton, Ohio. Um, and we have probably seven different neighborhoods just in Beaver Creek. Um, actually it's way more than seven. I don't know why I said seven, but also in Dayton, they have 26 specific neighborhoods. That's 26 different pieces of video. If I'm just doing a neighborhood show showcase every two weeks, I pretty much have my video content for the next year. Uh, you can do, you can break down, you can do an introduction of yourself, your office, your team. These are all different pieces of content that you can do. Uh, break down each step of the buying process or the selling process because it looks a little bit different on each end. You can do home organization tips. You can do before and afters. Uh, you can do information on loans. Again, I, I encourage you to be careful. I encourage you to use your lenders, your title people, your insurance people, your inspectors when you start getting into something that you are not licensed to talk about, but um, you can still give out very general information. Uh, you can talk about how to appeal property taxes because that's a big one right now. Uh, people are starting to get their bills higher and higher and higher. Uh, I don't know what the rate is out there, but people are like, I think they just raise, depending on what area you are, anywhere from five to 30% out here, like the past year. And there's just so much more pieces of content that you can do. Now, the next part is the not so fun part, talking about staying compliant. Um, I did, if I say anything wrong, please correct me. Again, I am out in Ohio. I am slightly familiar with uh, New York's rules, but not completely familiar. So um, that brings me to my first point. You wanna be familiar with your state social media guidelines. You also wanna be with your, uh, in par with your brokerages. So for example, I'm just gonna give Ohio as example. One of the social media guidelines is it's a form of advertising. Our name has to be the same size or smaller than our brokerage name. And then if we have a team name, we have to have that on there as well. And then my brand guidelines at my old company was we have to use certain colors. Um, we are a one click state. So what that means is that you have to have your information somewhere available one click away on that post. These are just some examples of what might be a guideline. And then Liana said, uh, if you have any questions about guidelines, you can reach out to her as well. Be safe about what you're posting. Um, this just goes for general safety. You don't wanna post when you're at an area. That's my general words of encouragement because you never know who may be watching and they may not have the best of intentions. Um, you know, there's there have been instances because I am pretty big on social media. There have been instances I have gotten messages from potential clients that weren't of pretty nature and they were um they were lewd and stuff. And so I had to put them into a background check and different things like that. And then I found out um, one of the people that was trying to contact me for a showing was actually a serial rapist. Um, so obviously I have my things in, you know, I have a background check app, which is called Forewarn. I also um, require a pre-approval before I meet anybody. If I have any weird feelings, I have people that go with me to certain events. So that's, that's just one of those things. So be safe about what you're posting as well. You want to stay in your lane as well. So if you know nothing about commercial and you're not actively trying to learn commercial, don't talk about commercial. Same with agriculture. If you don't know nothing about agriculture, don't post about agriculture. Uh, you want to stay in your lane. However, if you're actively trying to learn and everything, you can post about that and you can say the source that you got this information from. Um, also, again, lender stuff. If you start getting into interest rates, different things like that, that might be better to do with a lender. 
don't show house, uh, don't show houses. You don't have permission to show. Um, I can't remember if that's an Ohio specific rule or an AR rule, but, um, it's generally very nice anyways, that you don't want to film a house that you never had permission or your brokerage doesn't own and always get permission, especially if it's in writing, be careful what you say, cause it could come back and bite you. Uh, be mindful of clear cooperation, which is through NAR. So as soon as you post, I don't know what your guys' MLS rules are. Our MLS rules are pretty on par with clear cooperation. We were doing that way before clear cooperation ever came out. And clear cooperation is basically you have to have it in the MLS within 24 hours. Doesn't necessarily have to be active though, depending on your MLS rules. Um, once you start advertising a property. So for us, we don't have coming soon here. We don't have anything like that. We always have had, as, as soon as you start to advertise a property, you have to have it in the MLS within 24 hours. So that's one of those examples there. Whereas I know some of our neighboring MLSs, they have coming soon and you can actually put it, you can advertise it um, prior. And then as long as it's in the MLS, you can do, put it into coming soon status. So just knowing those different rules as well. And then code of ethics 10-5 uh, is be careful what you're saying on social media because it could come back and bite you. Um, we need to keep our fair housing in mind and everything like that. So anything that you are sharing on your public page could be used against you because you took an oath as a realtor to always be a realtor and uphold the realtor code of ethics. So those are just some examples of things to do. So who should you follow? I have some people that I really like to follow on Instagram that I think are do really well with uh, reels, different things like that. Same with TikTok, same with YouTube. Um, and I'll have my information at the end. I will, I always warn people with my TikTok. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a lot weirder on my TikTok than I am on my Facebook or Instagram. But um I talk about all sorts of things on my TikTok. So that's where, you know, I get to be my weird self, but I have different ideas about who my audiences are for each social media app. So I'm going to go ahead and let that sit for one more. And again, my name is Heather Haas. It looks like we're done about eight minutes early. Do we have any questions? I do have, um, I have a form, I not a form. I have this thing here that I can actually email to you, uh, Liana, and you can email to all your registrants, which is 100 content ideas for realtors. That would be wonderful. We're just getting some feedback in the chat asking if we can go back to the previous slides with your recommended follows. Oh yeah, for sure. I wasn't sure how long to sit on there. So let me go back real quick. There we go. Take a picture, you can follow there. I love Glenda, I follow her, she's wonderful. She's fun, and she's really great. She does everything interview style. So I try to provide a variety. Obviously, if you go on there, it is a lot of very funny people on there, but I tried to provide um, a variety of different styles. So for example, it's that real estate chick. She is out of Maryland. Uh, her name is Lauren. I've met her, she's really cool, um, really fun. She's probably one of the bigger ones on there. The mortgage mentor and the mortgage creator they do things from the lender side and they have grown a great audience. Kim sells Concord. She's out of North Carolina. Um, her whole shtick is she trolls the trolls and she provides value, but she also does funny videos with her vodka in hand. Like she is known for always having a bottle of Tito's in hand. So um, North Valley Group is a great example of teams doing TikToks together. Tyler Hossman does these really great video walkthroughs to where he's being asked to um, go travel around the country and do these walk listing walkthroughs. And that's how he grew his business. He just started. And I got to hear his story last year or earlier this year. And he's like, I literally had to ride my bike to showings. Like I had very little money. And he's like, this is how I grew my business. Um, Mr. C Melendez, that's Carlos Melendez out of Florida. He barely talks about real estate. He just wears his realtor pin and a lot of his stuff. And he'll occasionally add that stuff in. But most of his content is about Puerto Rico because that's where he's originally from. 
Um, Hannah Grabo, I don't know how's her last name, but she's really cool. Um, she actually has a cast of characters, so she's kind of, she does real estate stuff, but she's kind of known for her portrayal of mom and dad and Peggy, who is the quintessential realtor and, <laughs> and different things like that. Uh, Madison Rose Mason, she does great with those different scenarios, like I was talking about, like acting out scenes. Glenda does the interviews. VA Von Lone Lady, she talks just about like military. Mike's really good about reaction videos. There's all sorts of things. Peter, I'm so excited. So they're, they're really great uh, over here on Instagram. And guys, you can go on any of these. You don't have to be on all of them. Um, it's great to repurpose your content. And I didn't really talk about that, but there's an app called AnySave, which I use to download my TikTok. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the sound is off. Um, I find that with Instagram anyways, and there's other tips and tricks out there. I just pay the $2 a month to any save because it's the easiest and it's probably the most like accurate. Can you just repeat that quickly? Cause you just froze for a quick second. Oh. I just want to make sure everyone got it. It's called any save and I'll put that into the chat. Um, but there's all sorts of things there and that's where you can download like a TikTok without the watermark, or you can download an Instagram without the watermark. Uh, I think it's just a really great tool if you're trying to repurpose your content and I don't put all my TikToks onto Instagram and vice versa. It just kind of depends. Again, I have a different audience for all of them. Heather, do you have any thoughts about what's going on with, with Twitter right now, just in terms of the rebrand to X? And I know they're having some interesting video pushes as well, without getting into the mystique of Elon Musk in general. Just any, <laughs> any uh, impressions that you're getting? So I'm not many. Twitter's been kind of falling off. Like it was a great product, maybe like five, 10 years ago when it came out as a great way to connect with people. But like, even, I mean, you can tell by the NAR's research, you can tell by everybody's research, just Twitter was going down more and more and more. I don't know if the rebranding is going to help them. I like it's, you know, that's a little touch and go. Um, I think with the invention of threads, that kind of, that definitely did hurt them because people like that all in one kind of experience. But um, also threads user ship has gone down. Let's see, it's been around for a month now and it's gone down something like 30, 40%. Like people aren't using threads. So I think the concept of Twitter and th threads, the people who really like using that type of product are gonna continue using it. But the people who are like, oh, yeah, this is why I left Twitter in the first place, they're going to be like, yeah, we're just not going to use it and stuff. But I think they were very smart to make it attached to an Instagram. Like, yes, that was very interesting because when I, I set up mine personally just to kind of explore, because I am I also do the social media for the board. So I was also like, well, let me do my due diligence and see, you know, what's going on personally before I make a recommendation onto the board. And when I found out it was tied to my Instagram, I was like, huh. So yeah. clever to get all that user, all those users. Yeah, they made it super simple for you to create an account. Like you just clicked a button, you had an account. Um, and I heard, obviously I never tested it. I heard you can't delete your threads without now deleting your Instagram. That is so. correct. I, uh, I I sometimes do um, LinkedIn posts about this personally. And I that was a big one. I was like, just be careful. Like, you know, buyer beware you're, you're setting yourself up for life, but there's uh, just two minutes left. So I just wanted to open up to any other questions from the yeah. chat, um, for the Q and a before we, we thank Heather and, and send her on her way for one o'clock. And feel free to follow me on any of them. Send me questions. I don't mind. I like, I'm always answering questions for people and different things like that. We're getting a lot of thank yous. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I well, guess there will be a recording. Um, I'm pretty sure. The next few days. And then with that, like I said, I'll send out that um, little form of 100 video ideas to you so you can send that out to everybody. Awesome. I will definitely be sure to share that. So with one minute left, I just want to say thank you to everybody for joining us. Um, we'll have a registration link live soon for next week's webinar, which for our new and, and young professionals is going to be with Shay Hata. 
who will help us on building your business in your first year of real estate because we want to keep you. We love you here at LIBOR. So um, please be sure to look out for that registration link and we will bring you some more great content throughout the month. Yeah. And Shay's super great. She's very energetic, very knowledgeable. She's actually married to Nobu Hata, who used to be a part of NAR uh, and different he, different things like that. He's unfortunately moved on uh, to some other things, but uh, he's really great. And I'm trying to remember who else you have. You have Hiro and Rob at the end of the month. Yes. And we're also doing a down payment resource um, for home buyer assistance because I've been hearing from so many realtors that you know, a lot of people are struggling with down payment. So we wanted to make sure we provided that info about how to get your buyers funded and all the great grants and things that are available. But Heather, I just want to say thank you so much for your time. It's been such a pleasure to have you. This has been so informative. Well, thank and, you. Uh, and I hope to see you at Triple Play. Yeah, well, maybe this year, I think they, they're going to start putting me on for travel. So we'll see what happens. But um, it's not that far. Yeah, it's not too bad. Let it say, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. So we'll have to skip it a jump for us. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I hope you guys have a wonderful day then. Thank you so much. You too. And thank you again for your time. It was great to physically meet you. I'm so glad we could finally host you. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Got it. Thanks everybody.